Well, hello everybody, Jay Kladek here. What you see in front of you is a brand new, hot off the presses kit. It is the Mobius Battlestar Galactica Cylon Raider. Now, Mobius is not the first company to do Battlestar Galactica kits. The honor for that actually goes to Monogram Models, and Ravel inherited the tools. The tooling when uh, the two companies merged in the 1990s. Uh, but, uh, Mobius is not just reissuing the old kits, they're actually going in and doing all new tooling. Uh, Cylon Raider, of course, is the major nemesis in the uh, show Battlestar Galactica, both the classic 1970s show and the the uh, the new version that in, from the past decade. Those of you that watch Galactica know all about that. You want to know about this kit, don't you? Well, first off, how big is this box? Well, I'll give you a clue. This is the monogram kit, the original. <laughs> Bigger box. In fact, this box is so big, I think... Uh, I think Mobius could use it to uh, stick one of their semi-tractor trailer kits in here. This is a big box. The contents of this box are definitely mind-blowing. And give me a moment here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, are you ready for this? Normal size hands. How's that for big? <clears throat> very big. That is the center portion of this model. Uh, the outer wings go here and here, obviously. There's the upper half. There's the lower half. Sands the outer wing panels. <laughs> and, oh boy. I'm kind of laughing about this one. Uh, somebody, somebody at Mobius obviously had a nice sense of humor. That is a big version of the uh, Aurora Plastics inspired display stand which they put in most every one of their other kits. <laughs> it's a direct scale up. Support rod. I'd like to see them offer this stand separately. That's pretty cool. I mean, wouldn't it be kind of cool to put like a uh, Millennium Falcon on top of this stand? <laughs> You know, it's big enough to accommodate it. Outer wing panels. <clears throat> guns. The like. And we put a couple of these parts back in. Now, just to put it in perspective as to how big the uh, original monogram kit was. That's the original monogram kit right there. Well... You know, if, if this big kit was Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers movies, I'd be calling this one Mini-Me. <laughs> uh, the reason for that is uh, Mobius decided to actually do the kit in 132 scale, or believed to be close to 132 scale, to uh, match the apparent size of the ships on the original... Uh, Battlestar Galactica. Reason being is the original Cylon Raiders had three pilots, two sitting here and then a third in the back. Actually, the third guy commands. Occasionally had Baltar riding in the back seat as well. Um, <clears throat> so, naturally it's a big ship. So big, in fact, that uh, it kind of dwarfs your typical Colonial Viper there. This is a Mobius model of the Viper Mark II from the new show that I built a few years ago um, from my buddies at uh, the Sci-Fi UK website. Uh, we had a group build to uh, do some Vipers and custom markings uh, for a hangar deck scene. So I built this, shipped it over to them, they used it in the display. Yeah, I'll probably shoot a video on this one to talk about it later. But in any event, no wonder why the Colonials had an easy time shooting these things down. I mean, these ships are huge. I think somebody who was the worst pilot in the Colonial fleet probably could have shot a Cylon Raider down. Uh, but, enough kidding aside, I mean, 
is it 132 scale? Some people, some people are saying reference-wise, this ought to be. This is probably closer to 148. I don't know. All I know is it's big. But uh, one nice side benefit is, as I understand it, the size of this model is this kit is actually also studio scale sized, meaning that. Uh, before, if anybody wanted to do a Cylon Raider, they had to uh, build like an expensive resin kit that was made using Parts Masters, or go through a lot of work to collect a lot of the original parts. I mean, looking at the back of the hull here, some of the uh, light glare doesn't blow everything out. I can see pieces of 135th scale tank treads, uh, transmission covers, probably, probably from a Tamiya tank road wheels. There's a lot of parts on here that are identifiable. Uh, so, if somebody wants to do a, quote, studio scale, unquote, model, they can actually get this kit and build one. And even building it out of the box, they would end up with a pretty nice looking replica. Although, if somebody wanted to, they could actually even collect some of the uh, smaller parts to actually um, make their model actually look even a little bit better. Here's a bag of uh, some of the more recognizable assemblies, such as the, the cockpit louver, and <clears throat> I'm of the opinion that the original part for this may have come from like some 124 scale car model, because for those of you that are about my age, I'm, I'm about 43 years old, back in the 70s, if somebody, 70s and 80s, if somebody got a car with a big rear back glass they could put like this louver covering over it to uh, keep heat f uh, to a minimum inside the car but somebody could look straight through back so it wouldn't interfere with vision. The Cylons is kind of the same deal. So they look through these little holes going straight. I don't know. One of the episodes even showed that they could look off to the sides, although I suspect, suspect on the other side it would be a view screen or something like that. But hey, they're droids. They can do whatever the heck they want. Ooh. <clears throat> Very nice detail piece right here. A few more recognizable parts. Um, probably undercare suspension and stuff. Uh, looks like there might be some parts there from a ship model. Just to give you a little history of the uh, Cylon Raider model, the original effects for uh, Galactica were done by a company called Apogee Incorporated, and they were actually working a lot of, it was a lot of the same people that had actually built the models and filmed the original, uh, the first Star Wars film. This was in the days before uh, Industrial Light and Magic moved further north to, uh, from their Van Nuys, California shop up to, uh, up to uh, closer to San Francisco. So, a few of those original modelers that worked on Star Wars also worked on Galactica. And even in those early days, there were actually Galactica models sitting right next to uh, Star Wars models. So, if the greebling and the kit bashing, there's definitely a design lineage there that can be recognized. Yep, pulled some of the parts out of the bag. I went ahead and uh, snap some of them on. Uh, fit is pretty doggone good and uh, it's almost like a snap together model. Uh, each of the parts has got these rather thick round tabs that socket in these little sockets on the surface here. Um, probably might not be a bad idea to actually sand the edges a little. You might get a little bit better parts fit or something because Especially if you haven't put the hull together yet, and I imagine if you do put the top and bottom holes together, it's going to lock this shape in pretty firm, so well, hopefully you won't have any parts fit issues, but if you do, just either sand the sockets or sand the tabs, it should get to fit easier. Now, uh, the kit does not come with uh, an interior to speak of. Uh, but I, the reason why that is is because uh, they never built a full-size Cylon Raider in the show. They did build a section of the cockpit, 
but uh, everything was miniature shot and the model was never built with any open cockpit so uh, Mobius is leaving it up to the aftermarket uh, suppliers to come up with a pit forward or for somebody who wants to scratch build um, clever thing is though is well, the way these panels are built, if anybody wanted to, they could probably use this piece and maybe put like a battery pack in there and a light switch, and this could probably sock it in so tight uh, to conceal a lighting circuit. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, beauty of the Cylon Raider is if anybody does want to tackle this as a light project, it's probably one of the easiest light projects you could do. Reason being is all you had were like uh, three little tiny orange lights, one, two, and three in the nose. Those could be done with fiber optics. And in the back, of course, the engine pods. And yes, uh, Mobius does provide uh, two clear inserts, one for each engine, to go behind the exhaust vanes. Uh, so if somebody wanted to, they could light up the engines. Um, looking at the bottom of the hull <clears throat> yeah by the way look at all that reinforced gusseting they put in this thing <laughs> these these parts will not flex very sturdy and uh, I imagine this section right here could be used very easily if uh, somebody wanted to use it as kid bash fodder for another science fiction creation there's a lot of detail there um, one thing that's nice is on some of the parts they actually did separate molds. For instance, this is like a bottom cover here. And so this contains the support rod for the stand, where you can cover that over. Um, imagine if somebody wanted to, they could probably take a Dremel Moto tool and chisel that out and use that as your battery pack placement. And with this pressed on, nice and firm. Once you sand these a little down and do some test fits, it should work quite nice. But uh, overall I'm really liking what I'm seeing. Nice uh, recessed panel detail down here. Comparing it to the original kit, I mean if anything it does kind of reinforce just how good uh, Ravel did, uh, Monogram did these kits back in 1978-79. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of detail difference there, here and there, but uh, overall, not a bad job. And by the way, for those for those of you that might be thinking, okay, I'll get the new Silent Raider, I'll put my old ones up on eBay, don't do that yet. Reason being is that Mobius just announced that they are doing 172nd scale versions of the Mark II and Mark VII Colonial Vipers from uh, the New Galactica series. As a result, well... The old Ravel Cylon Raider, or correction, Monogram Cylon Raider. Yes, they are one company, but I like to refer them as Monogram, because this is a Monogram design, not a Ravel design. 172 scale, or at least pretty doggone close to it. So, you got the perfect companion. You could put, like, maybe one of these in, a, in an original Galactica docking bay. Um, but, yeah, don't pitch these out yet. These were actually pretty good for their time, but... This thing is big, um, and plus, not to mention the fact that there I know there are a lot of modelers out there that uh, don't have the room for something like this, uh, but they might have room for something like this. Here's uh, what else you get in the box in addition to the model parts. You get decal sheet, relatively small. There's only, I don't know how well you can see them, but there's two of those uh, Pentagon symbols on the wings. Um, you get an original Ralph McQuarrie, a print of the original Ralph McQuarrie uh, pre-production art. That guy really knew how to uh, design some pretty cool ships. And I would love to scratch build this version of the Galactica one day. And the instruction sheet. Everything's well laid out. Um, <clears throat> engine vanes, top and bottom pieces. Illustrations are easy to read. They're nice and clear. <laughs> yeah, basically you've only got four major parts assembly steps. Um, 
Now the color scheme for the Cylon uh, for the uh, Cylon Raiders is been a bit of a source of a conjecture. I don't know if anybody knows what the actual original colors were. I've got some decent pictures of the studio model, um, but it looks like the overall color is some sort of a pale yet cool gray color scheme. Cool gray meaning it's got some bluish tint to it, uh, whereas a warm gray would have more of a uh, of a tannish tint. So by that reckoning, the uh, the plastic that it's molded in definitely more of a warm gray coloring. Um, there's some areas of black and subtle weathering effects. One could go really go to town on this uh, combination of pastel chalk weathering, airbrush weathering. Um, there are some areas where there are some accents of <laughs> look at that details, cool gray. They even call it out kind of more like a medium gray, I would say. So, but yeah, just uh, basically get whatever pictures you need and go to work. Now. Some other modelers aren't too crazy about this. Rather than giving you big decals for the uh, stripes on the wings, they're giving you paper templates. Um, I kind of know why they did this. The reason being is that uh, the outer wing panels, they look relatively featureless, but there are some bumpy areas that a decal would have to conform to, and it may not do it very well. And so painting is the better way to go if you've got the ability to do it. Uh, these, I would say, photocopy them. You could probably photocopy them onto either scan them and print them out on Fresket paper. Or you can wait for, I'm sure somebody's got, like Aztec Dummy, for instance, has probably got some uh, vinyl, vinyl templates coming out. Uh, but probably what I'm going to do is I'll make a quick photocopy, cut the photocopies up, and use those as um, paper templates, and I'll just use masking tape to uh, mask it off. Beauty of it is, is even with the curvy area of the stripe, um, I've got some relatively skinny masking tape that should be able to uh, get that nice complex stripe in there and get it looking pretty good. Um, and if somebody wanted to, they could do some customizing. Remember the old, for those of you that are about my age, you probably remember the old Mattel uh, Battlestar Galactica toys. They had a Cylon Raider with bright yellow stripes. That'd be kind of cool to see. The... Uh, original monogram kit had uh, black stripes with a little bit of a red pinstripe on the outside. I'm thinking I might do that just to put a little color into it because otherwise this thing is a gray ship with black stripes and the only color are these green pentagram, pentagon symbols. So, but uh, in any event, I like what I see. Well, so what's my final assessment? Winner, winner. This is probably one of the best science fiction model kits I've seen, seen to come along in quite a number of years. And for a model like this, how much would you expect to pay? Well, <laughs> 80 bucks, something like that. Nope. This kit retails for only about $50. I got mine for about $42 at my local hobby shop. And wow. I mean, the thing that's really cool is the fact that this model, I mean, it's it's bigger than the Battlestar Galactica kit itself in physical size, but this thing is about 10 to $20 less than that uh, Galactica kit. Um, and I do understand that the Galactica kit does have some more complicated shapes, but, I mean, hey, a $40, a $41, $42, or even $50 studio scale model kit in styrene, not resin. <laughs> that is almost unheard of today. Um, I mean, heck, there are some, to me, of model kits of 48 scale World War II airplanes you can't even pay that little for. I mean, that's just incredible, the amount of value that you get for the price. I would have to say this this thing is probably bargain of the year in terms of how much it costs versus the value that you get out of it. Um, so, I would highly encourage you to, uh, if you're even maybe a past, if you're definitely a fan of Battlestar Galactica, get this kit. You will not be disappointed. If you're kind of a passing fan on the fence thinking, eh, I kind of like the newer ships better, get it anyway. Reason being is there's enough stuff on there to uh, 
keep a, keep even the most jaded sci-fi fan interested and it's definitely going to be one heck of a conversation piece when you get this thing done I mean heck uh, you could put it on the original stand or you could put it on something and paint it up to look like the original studio model and uh, people will think it probably is the original studio model I mean that's that's how good the details are I do know of a couple of guys that have already got these done and the fit well I'll let it speak for itself. I just snapped the uh, the upper and lower holes together. I mean, look at this. Mobius put a lot of design effort into that to make sure that the shapes align properly. And there's no warpage. This thing's not going to flex or bow. That's incredible. I mean, heck, if somebody wanted to, they could probably cut this thing in half up here and actually build like a full cutaway model. I mean, think about it. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if you left one of these engine louvers off and actually built something that looked like one of those D&K Publishing Star Wars cross-section books. With this kit, you could do it. Let's see, do they even have the hatch on the bottom? Eh, not that I can see, but you could probably put one in there. So, I imagine there's going to be a lot of aftermarket done for this kit. Um, but at the same time, too, like I said, lighting this one is not going to be very difficult with just a two or three LEDs and some fiber optic cable. And that's probably what I'm going to do, although I haven't fully decided. I mean, if somebody wanted to, we could get this thing done in maybe three days. This might make a great weekend marathon build for somebody. Might even be me. But in any event, um, I'm going to try to get this thing done for Wonderfest, uh, which is coming up in a little over a month. And uh, when I get it done, I'll have it there. Uh, my 1350 scale Enterprise is done, finally. Except for a couple of tiny little bits of weathering. Um, I'm going to shoot one more video of that. And uh, you'll also see a nice little uh, treat that I had added to it. Uh, which is going to make some of you fanboys jealous. But hey, I don't care. It's my Enterprise. <laughs> I'll, I'll do with it whatever I please. So in any event, uh, this is Jay Klodek, uh saying... Go out and buy this kit. Uh, get the other Mobius kits as well. I do have the other ones. Reason why I'm not shooting videos on those is because, well, they've been out for a while. Other people have done better videos on it, but and this is definitely one I'm gonna. Um, this is definitely the model I'm gonna build first, though. So, in any event, uh, here's to a good model building summer, and I hope to be back soon with an update on this. And thank you.